This video is all about consciousness. In particular, I want to discuss the nature of consciousness and how you can tell the difference, the critical difference between a permanent shift to a higher level of consciousness versus a temporary, what we call psychological inflation. Because my goal is to give you the tools, the knowledge to make a permanent shift. I know how to do the temporary stuff. It's actually not that hard, but I want to give you a permanent shift to higher consciousness. My name is Brett Michael Phillips. I am the founder and creator of the Awakening Dynamic System of Energy Healing and Higher Consciousness. And this is video number two of nine in our series on consciousness, where I'm going to map out for you the whole journey of human consciousness and show you how it works and give you a lot of tips and tricks to help navigate your journey more easily. So let's get into it. So the primary theme of this video is to understand that there is a huge difference between a permanent shift to a higher consciousness versus a temporary spike. And that temporary spike, unfortunately, is what most of us spend our lives chasing. The term my late mentor used for it is psychological inflation. And so most of us, maybe not you, but most people on earth are primarily motivated, almost entirely motivated by the agenda of the ego. It's understandable. I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just saying that's how it is. Kind of like if you go to China, you'll see a bunch of people speaking Chinese. It's not a wrong thing. It's just how it is, right? The trouble is following the agenda of the ego isn't going to do what you want. At best, you will get a temporary respite from your pain and suffering, but it won't hold. And I want to show you the way to get a more permanent shift. So let's talk for a second about the ego and psychological inflation. What does that mean? Well, if we look at most of the things we want, we'll just take two of the most popular, money and sex. Nothing wrong with that, right? This guy wants more money and more sex too. Most people do. Nothing wrong with that at all. The trouble is that we're willing to spend our lives chasing these things, thinking they will make us happy. They really won't. What will happen is, if you have a bunch of money, if you have more sex, you will experience a temporary high, what we call psychological inflation. And there's a reason this is dangerous. We want to look at, again, most of us are only driven to take action to satisfy the agenda of the ego. Get the things we want because we think they will make us happy, right? A lot of us think, wow, if I could have more money, I'd be happy. I could quit my job. I could dress better. I could replace my car. I could move to a better neighborhood. I could not have to work so I can stay with my family or write my novel or whatever your thing is, right? That's all great. I don't want to change any of that. It's awesome the way it is. The trouble is it's not going to work. Why is that? Well, on my journey through life, long story short, there have been a few points in my life where I made lots of money and other points in my life where I lost it all and had almost nothing. And what I have found is if you don't have any money and you start getting more money, it will make you happy temporarily, but it will wear off. So if you're making 40 grand a year and you have a big breakthrough, maybe from energy healing or law of attraction or hard work or whatever it is, and now you're making 80 grand a year, that'll feel great for a while. But within most people, six to nine months, you'll feel pretty much the same about your life. That's what I mean by psychological inflation. We spend almost all our time and energy chasing temporary highs. And so you don't have to work that hard to get a temporary high. You really don't. As an example, a lot of us feel better when we drink some alcohol, right? But you know better. So you can go down to the bar and have some beers or shots or whatever your thing is. And are you likely to feel better for a short time? Sure. That's how it works, right? But you go to the bar, you have a few drinks, you're feeling good. Do you really think that that good feeling is going to last for the rest of your life? Of course not. 
we know better, right? You can go have some drinks. You feel good for a while. The alcohol wears off. You don't feel so good. Maybe you have a hangover the next day, right? And so it would be ridiculous to think that if you just had more beer, that you could be happy for the rest of your life. We call that alcoholism. And it's kind of a one-way door to hell, right? So we know better. But that's exactly how we treat money and love and family and possessions. We think, oh, if I could just have this thing, a better job, more money, uh, be dating this person, be married to that person, have more kids or less kids or be in the country or the city or own my home or have X dollars in the bank or whatever it is. Again, nothing wrong with any of that, except the desire for it is making you miserable and it doesn't work. And it's interesting to me that alcohol in our modern world, as one example among many, right? You could insert sex, drugs, gambling, uh, love, family, possession, success, any of that stuff could substitute here. Most of us realize that getting more beer is not a formula for permanent success. Why? We know that it just leads to addiction. It will destroy your life, not improve it. But in the ancient world, before there was such an abundance of material goods, alcohol was much harder to come by. And they would have festivals, and maybe three days a year or whatever, the king or the lord or your local ruler would provide a festival for the people, and you could eat and drink as much as you wanted. And it felt great, right? When you're generally not getting enough to eat and life is hard, eating your fill is amazing. Drinking some wine or beer feels amazing. And people would think, wow, if I could just have festivals all the time, I'd be happy all the time. <clears throat> we know better, right? It would lead to addiction. It would ruin your life, not improve it. The only reason they thought that was there wasn't enough abundance for everyone to have all the beer and food they wanted. But now in the modern world, most of us have that. Most of us have as much food as we care to eat. Most of us, not everyone, most of us can afford to buy as much beer as we want to drink, but it won't make you happy. And the only reason we think money and love and these other things will make us happy is there's a scarcity of it. Does that make sense? And if you really did have all the money you wanted all the time, you would realize it doesn't make you happy forever. It leads to a money addiction. It will ruin your life. So here's the way I would put it. Psychological inflation is like taking a loan. And so there's nothing inherently bad about that, right? If you really need money to buy a home, to pay for education, to pay for medical treatment, whatever it is, maybe you go to the bank and get a loan. But realize it's not free money. You're going to pay it back with interest. And so psychological inflation is like that. All the things we chase after, money, love, sex, success, family, purpose, none of them is going to make you happy forever. It will give you a temporary boost, and then you're going to need more of it the next time, just like a drug. And you need more and more and more to get the same effect. And so sometimes it's appropriate. Again, sometimes you need a loan. I don't think I could have bought my home without a loan, right? I took a loan from the bank. I pay them a lot of money every month to pay back the principal plus interest. So at best, psychological inflation is like taking a loan from a bank. At worst, it's like taking a loan from the mob. The interest goes up and up and up until you're broke and they come and break your legs, maybe kill you. So be careful with it. But again, there is a time and place. Taking painkillers would be another example. If you just had some terrible accident or a surgery, taking painkillers may help transform that agonizing experience to be more tolerable. But just because it helps you take the edge off the pain when you're in agony does not mean that if you just had more painkillers, you'd be happy for the rest of your life. You know better, right? It leads to addiction. It will ruin your life. So here's what I want you to take away. All these things we want, all these lures of the ego, there's nothing bad about them. Money, sex, love, drugs, gambling, whatever. It's all cool. It's all part of life. But none of it is going to make that permanent change. 
the only thing that can make that permanent change is shifting your consciousness. And we also want to recognize that all transformative processes, energy healing, life coaches, law of attraction, traditional coaches, go to old hard work, discipline, investing, you name it. All these practices deliver some combination of permanent and temporary change. That's unavoidable. But let me tell you that chasing temporary change is not going to take you very far over the long run. One thing you can learn about people is you see how they relate to money. It gives you a sense of their consciousness. When I lived in Los Angeles, what I found was every Friday when a lot of the low wage workers, many of them illegal immigrants, not their fault, just how it was, right? They would get their paycheck and they'd all go line up at 7-Eleven to buy a bunch of big 40 ounce cans of beer. And they'd blow a big chunk of their paycheck and get drunk and be happy for a couple hours. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. You put in a hard week, you earn your money, enjoy it, right? But if you're just blowing your money on getting drunk, it's not going to build wealth. It's not going to improve your station in life. That's what I want you to see. I would love to share with you some of the processes I've developed for permanent change. I'm going to put as much as I can into this series. And before I leave you, I want to give one last concept here that is related to this stuff. I want to introduce a few terms you may or may not have heard before. They are peak experience and peak state. A peak experience is when you are temporarily elevated to a higher level of consciousness. You may have had an experience of this, what they call the samadhi or ecstatic state, where you're connected to everything, you feel good, there's a timelessness. And if you have, great. If you have, I'd love to hear from you. In fact, go put it in the comments. I'd love to hear, have you experienced that state? Maybe it's just temporary. That's okay. And if you don't mind sharing, I'd love to hear how you got there. For me, all of mine are related to music, but for some people it's nature or it might be family. I'm just curious to know. So please share while you're down there. If you think this video is cool, you want to see more, click like, click subscribe. It is important people. That's why every YouTuber nags you to do it. Awesome. Thank you. So a peak experience is a temporary elevation of consciousness. It's showing you what's possible. Parallel to, you know, you can go have a few beers and feel good for a couple hours, right? And then it wears off, just like a peak experience. There's nothing wrong with that. And I've gotten really good at bringing people to a peak experience with meditation and movement and some music and some other things. That's almost a known problem, meaning I know how to do it for most people. What's much more challenging is achieving a peak state. That means your consciousness has elevated permanently. Life is different, less suffering, more joy, more presence. And I won't lie to you. I'm here to tell the truth. Achieving a peak experience is relatively straightforward. It does take some work, some clearing, some time, some money. Yes. But it's relatively straightforward for most people. Getting to a peak state can be a bitch. It's much harder. It takes a lot more work, time, energy, focus, sacrifice but it is worth it. It is so worth it. Oh my gosh, because your whole experience of life will be transformed. So there's nothing wrong with the peak experience. In fact, one of the reasons it's there is again, to show you what's possible, to motivate you to stay on this journey, to heal yourself, to be a better person, to learn skills, to make money. That's all amazing, but that will not do what you really want. Only that permanent shift will. And so why is it so difficult to achieve this permanent shift in consciousness? Well, I'm going to pull a line from one of my favorite TV shows called Las Vegas. It ran in the 2000s. And in one of the episodes, they had a character who said this, why are divorces so expensive? Because they're worth it. Pretty funny, right? And I say that just to be in humor and jest but I'm going to say the same thing about higher consciousness. It's not easy to achieve that peak state. It takes determination, sacrifice, work, just like any important thing in life, right? If you want to win a gold medal, if you want to make a million dollars, if you want to have a great marriage, if you want to maintain a healthy body, they all take that, right? But they are all 
worth it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this is number two of nine in our series of consciousness, where I'm going to talk more about the specific stages of consciousness, the emotions that go with them, and how they work to help you shortcut your journey as much as we can. If you like me and my style in this content, check out some of the links below. Maybe join us for the free Healathon live webinar. Reach out to me for a private session or maybe join me at one of my weekend intensives. And until next time, please take care and namaste.